Well, there you go. And welcome to Inside Lumberston. My name is Dean Mazzarella, Mayor for the City, show number 200 and, what did I say, 49 this morning, so 249, so 250. 250 um, <laughs> since this whole thing called COVID started. And uh, we have guests today, and uh, it'll be a good show. Uh, stay tuned. And uh, you can catch us Facebook Live if you have to leave your TV set. And our phone number hasn't changed. It's 978-534-1626. The one thing that has changed is Big Art, because Big Art is getting one day closer to golf. And this is, this is relevant. You have got that right. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I was going over my gear today, and I was looking at some of the stuff. I marked up a few balls. and uh, Getting ready, and I see they're getting ready down on Route 13 at the old Sunoco that burned down. They're moving telephone poles back for their improvements. they got to get you quicker to the golf course. That's right. This is and I saw my friend Frank Bengrazi down there smiling away today. He's happy. He's always waving his hands like that. He's happy. Yeah. Well, he's got a calculator with him. He's getting all these special jobs. So he's adding up the, 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 the dough, you know? Checking on his CDs. I give him a big wave and a, he give me a big smile and point it at us. And good guy. Good guy. And What's then I went to the library and the new system where you call, you go outside and hit the buzzer. It's quicker than going inside. It's, oh, yeah. It's great. Oh, they got it down to a science now. Oh, I hit the buzzer. There was someone at the door. I said, read a bylet. The door closed. Come back out. Here you go. Enjoy the book. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Pretty, pretty good. Yeah. And you later know, later on the show, uh, the next guest is going to be Alexander Lent, and he's our new library director. I knew what? I, our, our new library director is going to be our guest oh, right I'm after good. you. He's going to well, try to. He's going to try to follow you. It's always spotless inside too. They do a wonderful job there. Yes, they That'll do. That'll make his job easier. Good and team. That's a good, thing. good team. And what else do I have? I think I don't think we'll have a water shortage after the. I went by Doyle Field today. They're over there stacking up the snow because they're dumping it from moving it from downtown, etc. Yeah, clean up the park. Seen. Cleaning up the parking lots. Yeah, I've never seen piles so high over there. Well, we got big equipment. Yeah, and we got another five inches coming, I guess. Can hardly wait. Oh, yeah, I'm thrilled. Don't but you I'm worry. Ready. You feel that sun? I'm... I get in the car around noontime, and that sun was strong. It warms things right up. Well, I got the fever. I took the truck out for a ride today. There you it's go. It's been parked since uh, December, November, December. And it's going to be 23 in August. And I got a few people staring at me today saying, what's that? Yeah. <laughs> but I got it up on Route 2 and got the oils hot and brought it home, covered it up, and parked it. Oh. You only go, around, you only go around once. It, isn't that the truth? What's Having said that, we'll talk to you next week, and good luck with the new job, Mr. Library Director. As they say in North Lominster, it's been real. It has. <laughs> All right, that was Art from the Art Report, getting ready for the new season and uh, a new game. Salute, Art. All right, we're going to take a short break. Ron's here to the left. We've got, what do we got back there? Carl's here today. Um, Mr. DePerry's here today. Who else? Where's Bradley today? Uh, Bradley's covering a basketball game. Oh, that's right. Is that girls' basketball today? Or? I believe it is girls' basketball. All right. Yeah. They're, they're cruising this year, having a good season. Yeah, all the teams are doing pretty good. Good to hear. All right, we're taking a short break right here, and then we'll be right back. Right here at Inside Lummis, the 978-534-1626. And we have a little citation for you, Lauren, oh, family. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck to you. We're all happy for you and thrilled. I'll here to help you out, but it sounds like you'll be more help to us than yeah. you will be to you. Thank you so much. So I left a little spot in here. Keith is on the right there from LTV, so yeah. you get a little commercial in here so you can explain. Okay. 
what you do. Do yeah. right now? Okay, yeah, cool. Go ahead. Um, so hi everyone, I'm Lauren Howe, I'm principal and founder of Howard PR. Uh, we're a boutique public relations firm right here in downtown Leominster, serving a variety of clients in the manufacturing, healthcare, and nonprofit industries. We provide um, brand strategy consultation services to either rebrand or strengthen your brand to your stakeholders. Uh, we also help nonprofits and businesses work together and come up and create um, sustainable corporate social responsibility programs. And one of our favorite slogans is when, um, when the worst happens, it brings out the best in us. And we work really diligently on coming up with crisis communications planning um, and response to help businesses deal with um, the unexpected. So we're really happy to be here in Lemonster and can't wait to get started. So don't wait for the unexpected to happen and then call her. Yes. The best thing to do <laughs> is call ahead of time because eventually something happens where you need some assistance, right? Yes. And for she sure. can help you get prepared even before, right? Eventually, time just kicks in. All right, let's go to the chamber one. Yeah. Ready? There we go. You like that? Empowered? You like that, Ronnie? You see how she did that? Yes. All right. Ronnie's approval. All right, we're back here at Inside Lemon Star phone number, 978-534-1626. Do we have a caller? Caller, welcome to the show. No hey, callers? Buddy. Just Franklin Knights? Who's there? It's Crystal. Hey, what are you doing? Not much. What do you mean, not much? Vic Hannaford was okay today. It's slow? No, because what happened was the bus was was late, so I had to walk to work, and then the Mart was being rude to me. <laughs> Did you hitchhike? No, no, I didn't. I, I, I walked straight to French Hill from Lancaster Street. All right. See, that's not that far of a walk. Yeah. What do you mean? You take the bus to get to work? Yeah, I remember I told you I'm taking the Mart bus for the first time. Oh. Yeah. Oh, on a nice day, you can walk. You're not that far away. Yeah, I know. Just stay on so the sidewalks. So I found out who the new uh, manager is. His name's going to be Scott. His father used to be in Victory Meat Market. <laughs> really? Yeah. He's the new manager? Yeah, he starts in a few weeks. He has help, and you can come by. <laughs> What's he giving away down there? Free cupcakes or something? <laughs> I don't know. Because, you know, we got to get something straightened out down there, like we did at McDonald's in, in Gardner. Right, Ron? Yeah, you guys got free pies. <laughs> Ron's fading away to nothing over here. I keep looking to my left. The guy's down to nothing. Yeah, he's giving away some You can let him know there's a lot of keys, 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 whatever the diet he's on. There's a lot of products to care for that for him. Oh, uh, should I put the camera on Ron? Look at him. The guy's GQ. Huh? <laughs> Look at it. Do we got a camera on Ron? There's a camera around here somewhere. There you go. Look at Ron. Who's that other guy over there? Yeah, I know. Kyle, who's the other guy? Who's that guy over there? That's our lighting dummy. Hi, Ronnie. How you doing, Crystal? Yeah. Uh, I just had to tune in because Ron's got people now. He's got followers. He's got an agent. He's got advanced people. So I'm uh, just still trying to, to get you to go skydive with me in There'll the spring. There'll be no skydiving for me, Mr. Buddy. I've, I've taken all the risks uh, in my first years of life. I'm not looking to – I'm trying to minimize my risk now, Ron. So when are you going to come to visit Hanford? No, I'm not going. I'm boycotting Hanford <laughs> until they start giving away free cupcakes. I'll let them know that. All right, and then I'll come visit. I'll talk to you soon, buddy. No, I actually walk in there. I get the, there's a, there's like a, what is it? Like a yogurt, and it has like, yeah. right when you first walk in over there, right there. That's, yeah. And then they got grapes. That's usually my loop right through there. When you get a chance, you should check out those perfect bars. They're like peanut butter cups. All right, I'll check them out. Ronnie's doesn't Take eat care, that buddy. stuff. He's fading away. He's eating beet salads. I, I, All right. I, I made a, uh, what are you eating, that uh, diet I made there? a, uh, what? Chicken crust pizza the other day. Chicken crust pizza? Yes. What happened to uh, cauliflower pizza? Well, that's, I make that too now and then. Is that any good? It's, it's excellent. Does it taste like cauliflower? Mm -hmm. No, it just tastes like pizza. Like pizza? Yeah. All right. I don't know. Sounds good. How about ice cream? Can you eat ice cream? Well, you can, but keto ice cream. I don't eat ice cream. What, what does it cream. taste like, that keto ice cream? I call it keto. Remember keto? You don't remember Peter Sellers? Keto. What was the guy? Was that his name, Kyle? Keto? Remember the guy used to fall through the ceiling there? Kato from Peter Sellers. Well, it tastes like ice cream without all the carbs and sugar. Oh, oh. well, how can it taste like ice cream then? Uh, you got to do what you got to <laughs> do to get healthy. Right? All right, all right, that's it. You just keep losing that weight, they're fading away to nothing. It's going to cost you a lot of money to buy new clothes, but good, you feel better, right? 
Yeah. yeah, good. Good for you. All right. Hey, we've got a guest, Alexander Lent, is a new director at the Lemister Public Library. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. How many weeks now? Uh, this is my third week. It's day 14 third today. Week. See, some of us count by years, you count by weeks. <laughs> Someday. But you'll catch up. Trust me, it narrows down. That's the goal. And you came from what uh, district before? Uh, Danvers, Danvers, up on the North Shore. And that's a haul. It is. And yeah. Especially when traffic goes. You know what I noticed lately, just on the last couple of days? There are more cars on the road. Yeah, there are. And, and that means a longer trip to Danvers if you were out in Danvers. It does. I'm not there anymore. Luckily, no, but I'm just but... saying it's a longer <laughs> trip, right? I mean, oh, absolutely. for a while, nobody was on the road. You just go from one part of the state to the other part in no time at all. Yeah, it really wasn't that bad for, for a little while well, until I got the job here. here. You live in West Boylston? I always say West Boylston, but it, I don't know why I say that. No, I'm in, um, in Petersham. Oh, Petersham, that's right. Because yeah. we talked about the Petersham country store last time. Exactly, yeah. Best store in town. Also the only, store, the only in store in town. So they can, when they get the award every year for the best Oh, yeah. They get store, it for pretty much every, every it's category. It's like the me party on the Muppets. Right. <laughs> I know everybody there, right? Me party. Anyway, if you have any calls, uh, any questions, 978-534-1626. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you've got a, a nice history and a, and a good resume for in library services. So Thank you. So this seems like the right fit. The uh, trustees did a really good job. I got to say, anytime... You, anybody wants to set up a committee, get them, because they are very thorough. <laughs> they Even are. when they built the library. I mean, you must see it when you go in there. I mean, they thought of everything. It's a beautiful library. And it's, it's you know, it's almost 20 years old, and it's still, like, new. We keep calling it the new library. Yeah. And people are like, no, when was it built? I'm like, I don't know, five years ago? <laughs> no, no, 20. But, yeah, it's a great building. We use good materials in it. Absolutely. Um, you know, as things get better, and you heard the call a little while ago say, you know, the whole drive up, curbside pickup is yeah. working well. The online pickup for activities, I hear a lot of parents say they pick up, you know, the kits for kids. Yeah. And that keeps them going. But it's a busy library. I mean, wait and you see when we get back to the normal, whenever that is, whatever the date is on the calendar. It's a busy place. Yes, it's, everyone's been telling me that. It's, yeah, it is. And it, even on the first floor where we're um, open for limited browsing, it gets pretty busy, which is yeah. um, a re nice thing. We didn't, you know, we realized that when we had to close down while they did the renovations, we had another location down on Mechanic Street coming off of 190 in that area. We called it oh, the yeah. old Mechanic Street. And we just realized when people showed up and were like, well, how do I get there? How many people, you know, use public transportation or lived close by? And we started running a bus service back and forth just to accommodate those um, who didn't have, you know, public transportation. So yeah, absolutely. it's in a good spot. Yeah, it's one of the, the great reasons it's in, in the downtown is that people can walk to it and they, they really do all the time. So... And uh, in, 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 there's so much to do. You have a great staff over there. Absolutely. They're, they're, it's a well-oiled machine, as they say, and uh, good people that are there, and a good uh, you know uh, board of trustees. Yes. And it all, you know, I mean, the stars are aligned. It's a, it a really wonderful is. opportunity. I'm I'm thrilled to be here. Yeah. So what do you see? I mean, when you walk through the you know the, our library, what are some of the things that excite you? That you're excited that uh, you know the, that already in. You know, things that you don't have to get going that you see that are visibly, um, you know, in good shape. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot going on. Mm. Um, I'll, I'll lead to my favorite bit, but um, I really love that there's a library of things, unusual items that you can check out, toys, tools, games, musical instruments, things like that. Um, the more traditional collections, the books are um, incredibly well curated. We have a really great collection. Um, we have a really good team that's that takes really good care of um, of our materials, chooses them really well, and makes sure that they match the needs of the community. Um, we have amazing programming. Um, there's something happening almost all the time. Um, but my favorite part by far is um, the staff. Mm. We have a really good team. They care a lot about their jobs and they love the community. Almost everyone is from Lemonster, mm -hmm. um, which is a good sign. And, uh, we have more than one store. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's hard were to pick which store to go. Were, were you born in Petersham? No, but I've lived there, lived there for, for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah good. Um, yeah, it's a it's a great spot. It's a nice little town, and it's not that bad of a commute to get here either. No, it's great. Gives you a chance to wake up, get some right, get your brain going. Yep. Get a little plan in your mind as to what you'd like to get done for the day, right? Exactly. So it works out well. Have yeah. a cup of coffee. There are on a the lot ride. of things. You know, libraries, and I say this all the time. At first, they were when we were building the new library, people thought, you know, that thing called the internet is here, and I don't know right. if people are really <laughs> going to use it, and but. The libraries, early on, even with CWMRs, mm -hmm. um, 
just amazing at the system they had set up long before technology was in place oh, yeah. in other places. It really was cutting edge. But libraries are very good at measuring the pulse of the community and being able to respond to those changes. Yeah, it's the best part of the job really is to make sure that you understand your community as best as you can and do everything you can to serve them. So it's, um, the library should be a reflection of its community. And right, and it is, very much yeah. so. Um, interesting thing here is in Lemus, it's, it's very diverse. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know we talked about, you know, before is how do we bring, you know, how do we get more people to look at the library as, that's my library. There are things here, you know, how do you get people sort of excited about it? And, and when we were young, they would, you know, halt, march us all down to the library and go through the guide <laughs> of periodicals. And then that would show you how to find a book. And, and things have changed, obviously. But that was our first introduction. And then the more you were exposed to books and different themes, and now there are movies and magazines and things yeah. online, it's unlimited. You get to the library, you, you go to the library site, you could be there, like people playing games, you could be there all weekend. Absolutely. There's so much on there. It just takes you forever. That's how we get you. It goes yeah. all over the place in a productive way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think one of the best moments um, for me as a librarian is when um, a resident realizes that the library is there for them and we're really, whatever they're interested in, we're, we're professionally interested in that too. So um, it's a place where you can pursue your interests, whatever those interests are. And so much of it you can get online. I mean, you physically yeah. had to go to the library, but especially now with COVID, there are many situations where you don't have to, where there are things to, to, that you can actually get online. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things, you know, technology we're finding now with, with the vaccine is, mm -hmm. well, they said, okay, everybody's 75 and older, just go to your computer and uh, right. log on and, and uh, yeah, and schedule yourself an appointment. Well, the reality is, uh, you know, not everybody understands technology, but the wonderful thing about the library is you can call and they'll walk you through it so that if you did want to order something or get something, and maybe it's a book that's at another library that you'd like, or they're always willing to help you out. Absolutely. So it's a little combination of the, you know, this sort of the retro pod and then, and, and then the, you know, the new pot when it's instant, you need it right away and you don't need any help. Right. Yeah, we're here for you, whatever the, whatever the need. Now you have two, two children? Three. Three, all boys, right? All girls. All, oh, that's what it was. Yeah. So I met a friend the other day and I said, do you have all, I knew you had one of all, right? You had all boys? He goes, no, I had six girls. <laughs> I'm like, six girls? It's a very big And they number. own a farm. He said, but you know what? <laughs> They're good workers, everybody helps out and it all gets done. Yeah. So three girls, and they've got to be avid readers. They are. Um, yeah, on my first day, they demanded that I take pictures of the children's room. Um, and then they went through all the pictures looking for dragons. We're really into dragons right now. No dragons at the moment, but there are puffins on the wall. And that, that sort of that satisfied them for now. <laughs> oh, boy, well, they'll have a field day in our, in our public library. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, welcome. And I did want to, we wanted to keep it light. But anytime you've got things going on that you want us to know about to help you to... Uh, Project out into the community. Let us know. Thank you. And we'll let you go on for we'll let you go for another three or four weeks before I have <laughs> you back. But it's just interesting, and we, we have a new treasure in town, and yeah. people like to know, and especially in Lemonster, people like to know just who these people are. You know, like absolutely. What, what, what are their interests? What do they like to do? And you got three girls, and so any hobbies at all? That uh, uh, other than reading, sleeping is a big one right now on. with, with that many kids. But um, <laughs> I, you know, I love to get outside. Um, I love to go hiking and, and gardening, and um, yeah. We have books for that, by the we way. We do, yeah. yeah <laughs> Sometimes we, I just read about them in the comfort we have two, of my own house. Uh, I hope, I'm not sure that it's in here. I'm pretty sure, but we have two hikes coming up. Oh, um, great. I'll read, about the, I'll read those in a couple of minutes, but Recreation Department, uh, Judy Sumner is very active in the hiking community. That's great. Boy, during COVID, all our trails look like 128. There was nobody on 128, <laughs> but boy, the trails look look like 128. We're lucky to have them. We sure are. I mean, there's just so much open space. Yeah. And same thing in Petersham in that area, right? I mean, Absolutely. eventually these rail trails are going to connect. And in the beginning, they connect now in certain places. And, um, and it's, it's going to be quite the network of, of rail trails that you just keep either walking, rollerblading, or riding your bike. Absolutely. It's pretty amazing. And it's, uh, it's nice that we've returned back to the, you know, to the outdoors. And, it and, is. Uh, Everybody's put their motorized gadgets away for a little while, or, or they do a combination of the, mm -hmm. of the two. Well, thanks for coming on. Thank you for having me. And uh, we'll be seeing you around, and uh, we'll, we'll catch up a little later. Uh, right now, um, anything happening at the library that we should know? I know that there's 
a ton of things, and they should just go to the probably to the website. They should. And, um, and there's, there's a lot going on, so more than much I can going mention. On there, and it just changes all the time. Yeah, um, I can say we're you know our, our first floor is open. You don't have to make an appointment. Mm -hmm. We'd we'd really truly love to see you. Um, it's one of the best things about um, being a librarian is is seeing our patrons right now, which is um, we, we've missed for a long yeah, time. Yeah, so. of course, absolutely. All right. Thank you, and Thank you very much. Uh, we're going to take a short break here at Inside Lemonstead. If you have any questions, coming on with another guest. It's uh, going to be a little nippy, but uh, that's a good thing because, well, there's plenty of ice at Barrett Park. Ron was down taking some pictures the other day. I don't know if you got any video of it, Ron. Uh, not lately, but I no. Got, okay, but new, like, lots of good pictures down at Barrett Park. And uh, 10 or 11 inches of ice. I wouldn't suggest you drive a uh, tractor trailer on the ice or drive your car on the ice, but plenty of uh, smooth surface there at Barrett Park. Going to take a short break and we'll be right back. So Lemister Plaza, so I want to give you a little citation from all of us, thanking you and wishing you well. Awesome. Thank, Thank you very you. much. So do you want to give a little commercial while we got you here? <laughs> all well. right, well, <laughs> so we opened about two months ago. We're very grateful for all the support that we've had in the community. Um, we have healthy options for meal replacement and also caffeinated beverages. We have drinks for kids as well, so we have stuff for everyone. Um, we'd love it if you would come down and see us, and we appreciate everything. Well, tell them what kind you have. Is there anything on the board here, right? Oh, That's we the have menus these are different. Like, yep, we have the menus over here. Shakes. Yep, and this is where we serve everyone. Like we have our our samples for today. Uh, our special pink flamingo is made especially for, for the city of London. You hear that, pink flamingo? <laughs> yes. So you know, we try to try to accommodate everyone. Nice yeah. job. Yeah. Good well, luck. we appreciate you guys so yeah. much. Thank you so much. It was really nice to meet yes. you. Yes. All right. Take care of those customers. All right. Thank you so All much. Right. Thank you very much. It's a short time. We're back here at Inside Lemons to thank you. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, we were down at Lumberston Nutrition, right down in Central Street. Um, yeah, we got we did three openings that day, Ron. Oh. Three, right, Keith? Poor Keith. I, where are you going, Keith? I'm like set up for the next one. Yep. So we did three openings in in one day, and uh, it is it is probably the one of the best parts of being on these uh, grand openings is uh, you know the fact that these are are small, uh, in some cases startup businesses, family businesses. And uh, they've poured their life and soul and every last dime into getting their businesses open and how exciting it is. And that's why we need to su support uh, small business, right? Shop local. Anyway, thanks for coming on again. It's, it's, I'm going to make sure I say your right name properly because it's a sporting name. And then maybe even know the definition and what it means, <laughs> right? It's Kang Shen. Kang Shen, yes. Kang Shen. Yase Masango. Masango, yes. I put the Italian part of the Masango. <laughs> yeah. the I, I can see that, yes. What's, get... the, uh, what's Kang Sun mean? Kang Sun is, uh, is a name from Cameroon. Yeah. It means friend in my mother's dialect. Really? Yes, friend. Friend, <laughs> friend of people. So. Well, welcome, friend. I'm glad to be here. We taught, we, so uh, we, we, we had a short meeting that lasted about an hour and a half, and I just kept getting. Hey, do you know we have another appointment? I'm like, yeah, we're having a good conversation. So, uh, welcome, welcome to the show. Thank you for having and, me. And uh, you picked a very interesting subject. Sure. Uh, one, you know, and and uh, I know you talked to our city councilor, Mark Bonanza. Oh yes. And he was the first person to ever bring up this. And I thought I'd never hear this again. And then I get this. We get this phone call, and Kelly says, "You've got to talk to this guy. He's been doing a lot of research." And I said, really? And I said, she, he says, and she said, you're not going to believe it. I said, who is it? And she said, it's Shadrach Minkins. 
from the Dracos, and uh, an out early uh, abolitionist. Yes. And but there's a whole lot more to the story of. So if um, um, everybody's heard us speak specifically to the Drake House, and how it was the Underground Railroad, and how Mrs. Drake was really ahead of her time in many different ways: women's Correct. rights, abolitionists. Correct. But um, Shadrach always kind of takes the, a little bit of a back seat. That's correct. To that, a little bit, not because, well, it's such a story here locally about you know the Drake House, and now we own the house and started the restoration on it. But what was the fast? How did you come across? So I was doing research for a project in school about the Underground Railroad, mm -hmm. and I came across the Underground Railroad in the Western Massachusetts area. Right. And I was fascinated by it because Henry David Thoreau has been one of my favorite writers. Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson is one of my and favorite writers. And they're right down the street. And they're right down the street, exactly. <laughs> so the more I started to dig, the more I found out that there was a lot of underground railroad activity over here. Right. And I thought that is not, I thought it's something that should be more obvious. I think it's something that the community should celebrate because that is such a great legacy given the predicament in which we are in as a country right mm. now. If we go ahead and say that, hey, in this area in Western Massachusetts, we've always been at the vanguard of progressive ideals, making sure that people's rights are respected. That is something we should also celeb always celebrate. So, like you talked about Shadrick Meekins, he was an enslaved man who escaped from Virginia mm -hmm. in 1850. In 1850, the Fugitive Slave Act was passed. So, Shadrick Meekins, uh, taking up residency in the area, became a very, very, you know, dicey situation yeah. for him, exactly. Um, he was arrested in 1851 by two officers in Boston where mm -hmm. he was working as a waiter. He was taken to the courthouse, and while he was there, a bunch of abolitionists led by Lewis Hayden, a black abolitionist in Boston, a lawyer who had, he was, they described him as an uncompromising abolitionist, attacked him and a bunch of other abolitionists, stormed the courthouse, and they got Shadrick Minkins yeah, out of there. Yeah, they broke him loose. They broke him loose. <laughs> Let's they, go, Shadrack, we're leaving. They hit him in an attic in Beacon Hill, and then they transported him all the way. He found his way in Massachusetts, I mean, in, uh, Fitchburg, in Fitchburg, and then he went to Ashburnham and all the way to Montreal, Canada, where he died in 1875 How or so. old was he when he passed away? He was pretty old. He was born in 1814. Yeah, he lived Quite he died in long. 1875. Yeah, imagine that. Yeah, he ended up getting to Montreal, Canada. He married a lady over there. They had four children. He worked as a barber, and a Was lot he of a barber. Yeah, he, yeah, he worked That's as a barber. He, did, huh? he worked as a barber. Yes. It's amazing. Huh? Yes. What a story. It's a great story. So, uh, I when I saw this story, I, I felt like, you know, I visited the Drake House first. Mm. I saw the monument that was there. I saw, I read up about the history, and I was very fortunate that you introduced me to Mr. Bonanza because he told me about his efforts, and he told me about what he plans to do mm -hmm. to bring a larger awareness to the community of this treasure. We talked at length about, at least my theory on why, um, why people assimilated so quickly here, and all the ethnic groups it assimilated so, so quickly here, and while this is really a, a true melting pot, and here, I mean, it's what America was supposed to be. Correct. <laughs> a melting pot. That's why we set this up. Like, yeah, we're not this, we're not this. We're like a melting pot. And, and I, I attribute to manufacturing and, and all hard work, manufacturing, construction, service-related business, all of these things together are areas that you have to be uh, a team. Right? I mean, you got to work as a team. I totally agree with you. One of the abolitionists I read up about was Wendell Phillips, and he said something that I thought really struck a chord. He said, constitution or con no constitution, law or no law, a person's humanity is paramount. And I think that that was the grain, that was the seed of perspective that, that allowed New England to be pretty, in a sense, forward, you know. 1851, having people break into a courthouse to assert the right of an individual. We would, we, would, we would eventually go to a civil war years later because of that same right that was being disregarded. So it puts us in a different place with regards to how we want to see the world. And I think it's very, very endearing. It's something that we should talk about a lot more and advocate a lot more. So Shadrach, I, I mean, it passed away in 75, but uh, being a barber, you listen to a lot of stories. Correct. He's a guy that had stories. You listen to a lot of people's stories. Talk about assimilation, a barber's 
shop. Correct. Look at today's pub, barber shop. They're like community centers. Exactly. People get there an hour early. Exactly. They leave an hour later. Their wives are calling. Go, hey, where are you? Oh, I'm still down here. You exactly. Know, and so he lived to, to see Martin Luther King. I mean, he, he lived a long, he, li he lived long enough if he passed away in 75. In 1875. 1875. 1875. 1875. So, so he lived to see some of the, uh, he lived to see some of the change. Um, in the world, but so much more had happened after he, he passed away. I mean, I, I remember still in the South, and where, when I was a kid, you know, um, separate entrances, Correct. sent to the back of the bus. Correct. And you talk to, I talk to people, kids today in schools, they don't, they're like, what? I'm like, oh yeah, no, <laughs> it was complete, I, 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 busing in, in Boston, you know. Busing in Boston, exactly. It, 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 we lived through it all. That was 1976. Correct. Um, that wasn't that long ago. It, it may was seem not. like a long time ago. It was not. But it, it wasn't. It and, was not. And we've learned a lot and make a, made a lot of progress in many different ways. But it's always like an ongoing thing, and we talked about it too. It's like, Correct. why are we still having this conversation? Like, like it, why? I mean, what's, and here, I, 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 I've got to get the the tape of the, one of the young ladies that spoke at the, the valedictorian at the high school. Correct. And she said, I'm proud to have brought up in the city and to have gone to a school system and be brought up in a city where we all get along. And it doesn't matter who you are, what color skin you are. It doesn't matter. Correct. We're 2021, we're still having this It, it shouldn't conversation. matter, but <laughs> like, unfortunately, it, yeah. And, and as much progress as you make, it's like there's, there's it's, it's in progress, right? It's progress in, is in progress. Progress is in progress. You take two steps forward, it take one step back. But one of the things at, that is difficult, and we, we certainly saw it, is um, the, when, we, when COVID hit, we found students of all colors, all ethnic descents. Correct. Who didn't, you know, it's like, yeah, we're going to start you know, teaching online. And, and then kids are like, yeah, but we don't have internet access at our house. We can't. We don't have a laptop. We don't have technology. Correct. And what we find through broadband or whatever is around the country, you get these sections of poverty where there isn't this access to good health care. Um, and, and that's where I see our responsibility, you, myself, and everyone, is to get the, to these areas where, you know, we talked about library services. Libraries are free. Getting kids to the library, bring in the library. We started a community outreach uh, several years ago where we're like, yeah, it's our we're here. Everybody knows we're here. They drive by, they're probably, it's, we gotta get out to the community. But throughout the country, there are pockets of poverty. It's, and, and it's up to us, right, to get into those areas to help kids Definitely. with the future. Because um, I, I remember as a kid, say Italian kids, right? Our sort of mentors were, we didn't know very many people who were what we classified as success. And Correct. success today to me is much different than what your job is, right? So success can be measured by hard work, you pay your bills, law-abiding citizen, family, maybe go to church, good, you know, good member of your community. To me, that's success. Correct. So how do we get, you know, how do we get everybody to be successful in their minds? But we didn't know and then um, well, Carl's brother-in-law, attorney, Ke Papasso, John Longo, you know, there were a couple of doctors that were Italians that became doctors and Correct. lawyers and dentists. And all of a sudden we're like, hey, wow, you know, we might not have to work in a factory. But it, had we not been exposed to that and a good education system Correct. and good role models, that might not have happened, right? That's, the, that's a very important point you mentioned about libraries. I know that a couple of cities a couple of city libraries, like in the city of Cambridge and stuff like that. They have a bunch of them, yeah. Yeah, they're setting out internet hops, hotspots. That's what for, we have now, yeah. You know, and this is, that's awesome. Even like in Fishburg, we have that. It's very, very great for people. Do you think, um, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, at one time, a business or, uh, you know, factories and business were built around the river. And then you had to be built around the railroad. Then came the highway. Correct. Now the information highway. And so... Even for, for students that might be in a very rural area of America, at least that access to, to, to the internet opens up many, many opportunities. It does, it really does. Like education is a very, very important thing. Once you change the educational trajectory of someone, you change their life, you change their ability to, 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 to progress. Social mobility it gives them options, a lot of options. So. Now you had a career in the military? That's correct, I was a former soldier. Did you enjoy it? For the most part. Yeah. 
you know it's not always fun to be separated from family no you know no. and you know so well thank you for your service thank That's you a, it, thank but you. it's a it's a good experience and not all experience <laughs> i always say this not all experiences are good but they're experiences and they help kind of shape yeah who you just are gestational they really help you evolve as a person and, you know they shape you you're right definitely right about that sir so um yeah i think it's fascinating that there are a number of books that have been written about the Underground Railroad, what, what Massachusetts' role was, and then New England's role, and the abolitionist, and how it really was not only the underground in terms of, you know, being able to move, um, you know, Americans from place to place who were, you know, who were sought after Correct. for breaking the law, but were an underground group that was helping. Correct. You know, they were members of the community. In many cases, um, were you know people knew who they were. They were sort of out. And then there were some people that were behind the scenes, kind of saying, "Hey, your family." You know, I, and that's I, says, I don't want to be so vocal yes. about it, but I do want to help. That's so says, they were underground. That says something to the sentiment of the area, the general hmm. sentiment of the area. People were known to be helpers of the Underground Railroad. It was known in the community. You know, they may not have, uh, these people had logistics to go ahead and transport their enslaved to different places, but the regular person, the barbershop, the guy at the grocery store, everyone knew that these leaders in our community were dedicated to is the cause of human freedom. So I think that that had resonated that much to where they were able to run into a courtroom and seize an enslaved man from there. I was really inspired by that. It's, it's amazing, yeah. huh? That's They're like, hey, we can't let this happen. Correct. And they, they drew a line in the in They drew a line in the, the sand. sand and said, we're not going to let this happen. The, and if we the, have to bring in other people, we're going to do it. But Correct. And, the, and imagine that you know, they had to keep moving people around constantly and, until they could get them to a safe zone, or, and sometimes that didn't happen. And, and that's one of the, the reason why this resonated with me a lot more is because I feel like right now, if we copy that example as a people, the change that we could institute in our country would be so great. To draw that line in the sand, to say that we will stand for our brother, irrespective of their sexuality, irrespective of their race, irrespective of what they believe, who they worship. If we drew the line in the sand and say that person, we are invested in that person as much as we are invested in ourselves, we would change this country. We would yeah. definitely progress to a more perfect union. And I hope that, that that's what the and purpose well, of we this is. we were supposed to set up ourselves that way. Correct. That's the purpose for you know, this, this you know, country that opened its, its, you know, let immigrants come here. And, and look at our community. I mean, we, we've had every immigrant group come here. You know, those that immigrated from other countries, we'd have every group has come here and all followed that hard work ethic. And I think that's why, as I said, you know, you gotta work as a team, construction, manufacturing. There are a lot of these team efforts. Correct. And no one cares when you're on a team. You got a job to get done. What people care about is, Work ethic. Correct. Not your ethnic descent. Although we all have our own, you know, our favorite foods, and, you know, we all celebrate. I mean, you know, we are, every one of us They're does. part of the beauty of this country. Exactly. You know? Everybody's fact, got a story to tell. Exactly. You know? And so it's, it's, it's been a wonderful thing. And as I said, you know, work in progress, but uh, made a lot. I, I mean, I think a lot of progress has been made. My big issue is kids and kids in poverty and kids in not just our city, but around the country who are in areas where they're not safe. Correct. And if there's anything Congress and Senate should be doing right now, one of the high things is getting these kids out of these areas that are unsafe. Correct. And, and getting them whatever resources it takes to get them out of those areas, because imagine growing up in areas like that where it's unsafe, where there are, um, you know, um, what, what do they call them? Bullet? What, what do they call them? The, where they put all the detectives up in neighborhoods so they can tell oh, if the shots are fired. Correct. Fine. Correct. And, and they, they put them up as a, as a. And you listen to the scanner or whatever. In some cities, I mean, there were like ten gunshots going off. That's not. That's not shots fired. That's like a gunfight. <laughs> 10, 20 shots. And little kids, who are supposed to go and learn the next day, are in neighborhoods where you know there's gunfire at night. And. To, to me, that's like the most important thing is to, to get those kids safe, right? I, I always think about that, but I also think about the situations that make this neighborhood poor, or the, the, the situations that uh, make this neighborhood pretty, in, 
bring the neighborhoods in the creation in the situation that they're right. in. How do, know, they get there? how do they get yeah. there? How did this how did this happen? Why are there no jobs in these neighborhoods? Why is there no education in this neighborhood? Why are these why are the people in this education are in this neighborhoods uh, over police or marginalized and stuff like that? I think that those are themes that we should consider. How is it that schools in this neighborhood they don't have the best resources? They don't have the best books in schools and neighborhoods. They typically have don't. Other, you know, There's half the problem right there. Yeah, the exactly. last to get this, the last to get that. It's just generally the way things happen. And that's what I'm saying is it's yeah. incumbent upon people in power to say, hey, wait a minute here. You know, we're going to, you know, we're not just going to be Bethesda and Virginia and Washington Correct. and Boston. Pro no, we're going we're gonna to get out to these other neighborhoods and we're going to get to these other cities and we're going to get to the root of the problem here. Which is why I was very... We do a lot of talking about it. No, I know. This that's is why... the problem. Well, what Mr. Uh, Mr. Bodanza proposed, um, we're talking about... Uh, Possibly like a name, uh, changing the name of Franklin Street with right. regards to Shadr right. Mr. Shadrick Lincoln's, yep. you know. And he said it may be hard to, you know, change the name, but he wants to set up a mini library at the Drake House, mm -hmm. which is a social justice library. And the purpose of this library would be to educate people in the area on the issues at hand. Okay, so why do we have poor communities? Why do we have themes like redlining? Why do we have all these themes that make some communities Labels. poor? You exactly. label them, you become, you know, you become your label, right? Exactly. Yeah. And then the unfortunate part is that, you know, the government contributed to some of this labeling with, you know, with a lot of research that's going on. That's why we have red lighting and we have poor communities. Right. So I think these things are very important for us to understand as a nation and as a community. It would be in our best interest to know these things because it would help us serve each other. Sure. Uh, for, and from you want to see kids, you want to see everybody. You do. Successful. Correct. You know, no matter who they are, you want Correct. them to see them succeed. And that's why it's so important that places like the Boys and Girls Club, play, uh, to have good teachers and good schools, because that is for, for even a kid in poverty who might have problems at home. You know, this is their outlet. This is where they go, and a teacher sees them and says, that kid's got talent. Correct. That kid's got a brain. They can go somewhere. It's up to us to put our resources together to make sure that that kid gets the right route in education, or I, maybe an opportunity to go to college or get a trade or whatever it might be. I agree with you, sir. All right, do we have photos of the week here? Uh, we do. One let's do some. You got time? Sure. All right, let's do some photos of the week. Let's see. Uh, we'll do some slides, give you the updates on numbers. I'm clicking, but nothing's happening. <laughs> it's coming. All right, take your time. There you go. Let's check on our numbers. Uh, we'll have updated numbers soon, but for now, I'm trying to go to my next slide. What am I doing wrong? Is it me? It's an operator malfunction. Here we go. So 1,920 people, with, this is as of yesterday, tested positive in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. 100,000 people were tested. Uh, 82 deaths, one's too many. 275 new uh, test positives in Worcester County. We're down one, but that's down, uh, that's down significantly from two weeks ago when we were at 560. 2625 off isolation, 1,358 people across the Commonwealth are hospitalized with 309 in intensive care. There's some testing sites. People are still looking to get tested. Uh, Health Alliance, Reliant, CVS in Lunenburg and Carewell, John Fitch Highway in Fitchburg. Please call or uh, get on their um, website and uh, make sure you have an appointment. That's the only way they're going to take you. Don't forget, you can go to gov, mass.gov, info details, stop the spread, and all those things. Just Google any of those things. All will come up. There's a, so we've gone from testing to vaccine sites, uh, Gardner Walgreens, UMass Memorial, Lemonster Hannaford on Lancaster Street in the Garden of Medical Arts. CVS is on the way. Um, we have uh, vaccines going to be administered at the uh, Lemonster Housing Authority high rises next week for those 75 and older. Instead of us having them come out, we'll go to them. Uh, and then uh, there's a ton of things that are happening. Unfortunately, it's not a sort of single point of entry where uh, we had it set up where you come to the mall and we do it all. I like that, huh? For a little tagline. Yes. <laughs> come to the mall, we do it all. Anyway, um, so there are a number of different agencies that are involved, but more and more vaccines are coming in. If you are, um, if you are, are somebody that is not comfortable with technology, there's nobody around to help you through it, you can call our hotline Monday through Friday, um, business hours 978-534-7500, extension 5. 
and we'll let you know what, what sites are open. Um, uh, Worcester State is, is now online with St. V's. Uh, they had some openings, and we checked that all day, and we'll let you know when the openings are. The Housing Authority, again, is partnering with Community Health Link in the city to vaccinate uh, those at um, 161 Spruce Street and 100 Main. Haywood Hospital is also administering uh, vaccines. CareWell Urgent Care Center. If you're a veteran, now I know it says 65, but I'm told 55. So if you're 55 and older or 50 years and older, then, and you're part of the medical system for the VA, in bed, uh, you can go to Bedford or you can go to uh, uh, JP, I think. Uh, is it, that's where the other hospital is, right? Did you make a complaint? Yeah. 781-687-4000. And they're open on Saturdays as well. Uh, make sure you call that number. And uh, if you want to know, so they have this portal set up. And if you want to know where the sites are, there's, there's always sites available at um, Gillette, and there's some at Fenway, and they're more and more opening up in this area. But again, if you have any questions, call our office. We'll help you through it. In the meantime, the single point of entry that they have right now is MASS. It's MACOVIDVaccines.com. And uh, you can also call 211 for information from the state, and they will walk you through the process as well to get you signed up, hopefully, as close to your home as possible. Uh, cases are down 61% since January. Hospital census is down 42%. ICU census is down 30% since January. And as of Monday, about 910, 450,000 um, doses have been administered. And we're getting about 1.2 million that have been shipped to, to us. So I have this new thing. So I think what happened is nobody was getting, people couldn't, 75 and older were having a hard time getting to Gillette. Correct. Because it's in the middle of nowhere. It's parking lots. So what they said is, well, I think what we, what we should do is, and we're going to set up these main six uh, distribution vaccine centers across the state. And when they realized that people were having a hard time getting them, they said, well, if you have somebody who can accompany you and drive you there, then we'll give them a shot while we're there. So yeah, yeah call 211. Uh, there's like 500 people standing by to answer your calls. So um, pick up a phone, your home phone, your cell phone, uh, 211, and that'll get you a shot right out to uh, them, and they'll help you s schedule a spot, tell you where there's some openings, hopefully close to you. Let's go for pictures of the week. Where are we? There's Rocky. There's Rocky right there on ice. Rocky's going to eventually fall through somewhere around August. But if you want to guess when Rocky's going to fall through, Rocky's on the left there, by the on the right. <laughs> Rich Rotor's on the left. Rocky's <laughs> on the right, looking all spiffy. Um, so you can buy tickets or chances or whatever you want to call it. Make your prediction. It's uh, www.leovents.org, or you can go to their Facebook page, Rocky Falls Through the Ice Veteran Center Ice on Facebook. Restaurant week coming up, February 21st to the 22nd. Very exciting. It usually slows down for restaurants. If you own a restaurant, know somebody owns a restaurant, you're a patron, have, tell them, say, look, it, this is a good week for you to help boost your restaurant. Maybe you have a, uh, a you know, right, if you have family and kids, it's pretty expensive to go out to a restaurant these days. Yes. Unless you're going for the four for four at Wendy's, which I'm a frequent flyer at. Mm. You can get the uh, grilled chicken. For, I mean, for two for five bucks. Grilled chicken. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's real chicken. <laughs> Is it real chicken, Ron? Come on, you're a head nutritionist. It comes with a bun, and it's, you know, it seems like it's okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, right? You can get the two for five or the four for four. Anyway, um, this helps boost restaurants in a typical week that it's, it slows down. So if you know somebody that has a restaurant, you go in the restaurant, tell them, give us a buzz at 534-7500 and get their restaurant list. So you can do something simple like, you know, free dessert or free ice cream or free beverage. Anything like that will, I think, help things out. And there's my best. There's my weakness <laughs> right there. The pizza crawl. So you pay, you, you buy a ticket, and you go around, and, uh, and you test all the pizzas, and then you get to um, pick your favorite, enter it in, and we end up picking, like, the best pizza in London stuff. This one's always fun. So you go to each place, and they is, cheap money. Is, is there a beer there, sir? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> you can buy beer here. <laughs> okay. We have the beer fest in the summer. That's, okay. Hopefully, that will return back to that. Uh, so March 21st to the 27th. And recreation hikes coming up. Call the rec department at 534-7529. That's 534-7529. You can email Judy Sumner, and they're going on February 19th. Uh, hike at Barrett Park. 
and then also another one at the Lynn uh, Basins Trail in, in uh, Sterling, and that's coming up on March 20th. Thank you to Ocean State Job Lot for donating more than 30 boxes of supplies to the Lemons to Fire Department. We want to thank them. That was a, a generous donation. I know they collected funds and have been. They have a little counter. They ask you, would you like to make a donation? Uh -huh. And they came through. I was wondering, I'm like, all this money that people donate, where does it go? And we got a call from Ocean State Job Lot, and they said, yep, don't worry about it. Stop down, pick up 30 boxes of supplies. Not bad. People have been just great about uh, making donations around here. Leo's Marble and Granite, 444 Central Street. We did the ribbon cutting there. And there's a perfect example of... Um, Young families, young families, young kids, working hard, opening a business, and uh, doing everything right. And that was great. We did three grand openings that day. There's the second one down at 285 Central Street, Lemonster Nutrition. And then we went over to Empowered, 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 20 Main Street, and they're a PR firm uh, working across the country uh, for different uh, companies of all sizes, nonprofits, and uh, very sharp, great organization to have you right at 20 Main Street. And Pilgrim Church held their annual tea on Zoom, complete with entertainment, and a great time was had by all. There's our vaccine clinic for first responders. Thank you to Montreal Health Network, the mayor's office, health department, and the owners of the mall, the Hull Group. Uh, very organized. Did a couple hundred of them in one day. They were done by 2 or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. That's phenomenal. And uh, yeah, it was great. M, Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild, uh, said they wanted to congratulate the alumnus the public school system and recognize the incredible work of students and educators in our system. And throughout the month of January, the METG, which is the Massachusetts Educational Theater Guild, uh, recognizes uh, school districts across the state. And they wanted to uh, especially uh, recognize Abby Waterhouse. It's been on the show before. Okay. She was awarded second place in the Doug Ingalls Acting Scholarship Contest. Uh, Celia Lomont and Reagan Boulay were awarded second place in the Scene Partner Contest. And then sister of a Abby named Eber. Emma Waterhouse were awarded the honorable mention in the Musical Theater Contest. That's wonderful. Talented. We've always had incredible talents in our theater arts and performing arts. Yes. We miss one generation after another after another, and they do wonderful things, and they wanted to uh, point all that out. So That's wonderful. It's a, it's a great thing, right? We've missed the arts. I mean, I think through COVID, that was the hardest, one of the hardest things is Correct. kids' plays at school and the holidays and concerts we have a, a, at the Pilgrim Church. They have bell ringers that come in from the Merrimack Valley in January, and we missed all of those things. And Correct. You know, it's just a frustration from a lot of people that would attend those and didn't get a chance to. But we try to make up <laughs> for, you know, local access television. Correct. We showed some repeats of, you know, events that were held 2019. So it kind of was like a little taste of what was going on. We still did things. We just had to do it differently and, and you know, a little more safely. So hopefully the vaccine is, is uh, I, I, I think the, the problem is, they overcommitted. They said, anybody over 75, come and get your shot as of February 1st. Well, everybody wants, it's like, who wants dessert first, right? I mean, I think it got to be that point. These people have been in their homes for almost a year or a year, and they heard they could get a shot, and so now you've, you know. So anyway, we're here team players, and we're here to help exactly. <laughs> any way we can. So what's next for you? School graduation is in May. That's so, it. So, um, but uh, I really look forward to keep working with Mr. Bodanza to see if we can set up a mini library. Yeah, that's to, a great thing. And uh, hopefully have that library named in honor of Shadrach Minkins, um, but basically school, sir. Yeah. Yes. Then what? Well, I mean, we're going to do professionally. I mean, what do you, what, what gets the blood going? What gets the passion in the belly? I write. That's what I do. I write. So sir. you like writing? Uh, I'm going to grad school after this. I'll put a, a couple of applications, so we'll see where that goes. But. Just to, to, just to continue to evolve in that trajectory. Good for you. Thank you, sir. And keep writing and having fun. I mean, obviously, when you're reading some of this history here, it gets it going. You're like, wow, this is interesting. This is so interesting. What a great story to be told. And so many great stories to be told uh, from so many. And somebody needs to be out there to tell those stories, Correct. right? Correct. So would you stay kind of into this area, or do you have other interests that you'd like to write about? 
Oh, I have a wide range of interests. So you can go anywhere, anywhere and just whatever comes to you. Correct. Well, that's good. Thanks for this. Has uh, been great, and and thank you for coming on with us. And whatever you're up to, let us know, and we'll get you on once in a while, and we'll just get up to date. We'll drift off. We'll start talking about one thing, we'll and just, we'll drift off. We'll just drift off to another area, and uh, but we really do. I mean, think about it. Getting every kid to be successful and finding the passion, something that they're really excited about. Correct. And 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 having them and. Not all the things that you get passionate about end up being the things, like they always say, you know, find something you love to do and never work a day in your life. Bingo, that's been me. I mean, that's, you know, and I get paid on Thursdays. I feel guilty sometimes. I mean, but, you know, that saying, you find something, you, like if you could actually get, imagine if you could have a career and they pay you to write. It's like, wait yes. a minute, they pay me to write? I mean, this is, but not, if, but people can have hobbies and that's another way of expressing it, but finding kids' passion and exposing them to as many things as we possibly can. Correct. And let them follow their passion, but be there as a community, as a family, to help them out, right? To, Correct. To achieve that. Correct. And uh, I think that's the, one of the best things in the education system that we could do, is expose kids to as many things as you possibly can. I don't care what they are. There are so many things. Like you said, I have so many interests, right? When I went to school, you had, they had four clubs, the ski club, the camera club, you know, today, there are so many interests. It's it's off the charts. I, I agree with you. I think that there's something to be said about an educated population. The more we are educated, the more we can handle our democracy. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing in America with regards to education. Then you won't have people believing all sorts of stuff, and you'll be able to probe circumstances critically. So um, that's why I really want to keep putting out stories with regards to marginalized people in the United States, because theirs is a story that has traditionally been silenced and the more we learn about these things the more we learn about ourselves so that we don't re repeat the same mistakes again yeah that is my motivation absolutely yeah. well thanks for coming on thank Kyle's you Kyle's coming out me. he's like a digger old Dell he comes out when <laughs> when it's time to wrap up remember digger old Dell well, digger old Dell was the undertaker in um, what's his name um, the, the old radio show and then he had a TV show what was his name Digger old Dell. Somebody will Google it. I'll Google it later. Yeah, he was the, um, oh, what was his name? Anyway, I'll think of it and I'll let you know. But he was one of the characters in the show. Now Digger old Dell. Oh, the Undertaker. Okay. All right, we're out of time here. According to Carl. Busy week coming up, and we're doing our best to, to um, get you uh, a, an appointment as close to uh, your home as possible. More vaccines are coming in. I anticipate that that will help, um, you know, sort of ease up the frustration. I totally understand why people are frustrated. We have people that just all day long just watch that, um, go to that website, and just stay on it and watch to see what opens. Then, so all morning long, it'll say filled, say Tuesday or Wednesday. Then all of a sudden in the afternoon, like 310, 62, sites will pop, 62 spots will pop up. At the same day, they told us to fill, so it must be people. And I think part of the problem is what's going to happen is somebody's going to take a date next Friday, but Correct. they're going to find a date that's sooner, and so it'll be Wednesday. So they're going to they're going to come off one and go on the other, and that's going to be a little bit of a confusion. So nine seven eight five three four seventy five hundred. That's our phone number at City Hall Extension Five. That'll take you right to our hotline. Thank you for watching. Good night. God bless you. Remember, the world is run by those who show up. Got to show up. Got to show up. Take care. Be well.